Welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. In this video we will talk about an unusual category of aeroplanes. Aeroplanes with three engines. Why would you have three engines on an aircraft? For the answer, I want to take you back to the 1920s, to the start of aviation. In those days, reliability was key. What if an engine failed? This photo of a 1927 DH-66 Hercules shows how they addressed the question of safety. The DH-66 was a three-engined, two-bay biplane with room for seven passengers and the ability to carry mail. The two pilots were in an open cockpit above the nose. It was developed for Imperial Airways to use on the Cairo to Karachi route. This type of aircraft also served in Australia. They had a requirement to have sufficient power in reserve to maintain height following any kind of engine failure. If you look closely at this photograph, you can see that one engine is switched off. This photo was probably taken during a testing flight where they deliberately shut down one engine to prove that the plane could still fly successfully and safely. Imperial Airways used the Hercules effectively to provide long distance service to far-flung regions. Although the giant airliners were slow and cumbersome, they pointed the way for future airliners. Let's fast forward 40 years when de Havilland built another three-engined aircraft. Welcome to the de Havilland DH-121 Trident. In 1955, de Havilland did a design study for an aircraft to replace the propeller-driven Viscount aircraft in response to a request from BEA one of the British airlines of that era. The original design was for an aircraft with two engines. De Havilland was already an established manufacturer with lots of experience, particularly on the famous Comet airliner, and they had a good after-sales service. But at the time, BEA was very conservative in its approach to technology. It preferred its jet turbines to turn a propeller rather than push its aircraft along on a trail of hot gas. However, the high speed and quietness of jet engines was impossible to ignore. When BEA did finally agree the idea of a jet, their specification had called for more than two engines. But as they did the design work, de Havilland concluded that having as many as four engines would make the aircraft less economical, so they designed it with three engines. Putting the engines on the back of the plane would not only make it quieter, it would also keep the wings clear and make the aircraft more aerodynamically efficient. So the Trident was born, and three was the number of safety. Not only were there three engines, but also three separate hydraulic systems. So, let's compare these two aircraft, one from the 1920s and one from the 1960s. The most obvious similarity is that there are three engines for safety. Although it's worth remembering, how much technology had grown since the DH-121 Trident also had three sets of hydraulic controls as well. But let's look at the differences. In the 1920s, you had to be rich to be a passenger in an aircraft. By the 1960s, package holidays were becoming available to the masses. Air travel was for everyone, not just the rich. The DH-66 Hercules was powered by Bristol Pegasus engines driving propellers, whereas the DH-121 was powered by the Rolls-Royce Spey engines. This meant that the Trident could fly 575 miles an hour at 35,000 feet, which is a far cry from a mere 100 miles an hour at 13,000 feet. So if you wanted to fly to, say, London, to Cape Town in South Africa. You had a 2,000 mile range, so you needed just a few short stopovers before you arrived at your destination. The DH-66, on the other hand, had a range of a quarter of that of the Trident. A journey from London to Cape Town might take 11 days or so. And having arrived at the destination, the DH-66 could carry seven to 14 passengers the pilots would then climb out of their open cockpits, no doubt affected by the weather. The Trident, on the other hand, had a fully enclosed cockpit for the pilot, 
co-pilot and the flight engineer who was looking after all the complex electrical, mechanical and hydraulic systems. And the 100 to 180 passengers would leave the aeroplane having travelled in a comfort that would have been unheard of previously. But the DH-121 Trident had even more features. Foremost among these was a completely automatic blind landing system. It was possible to automatically guide the aircraft as it approached the runway, even in fog. And that was a major benefit for airports, particularly British airports. In addition, the pilots had a moving map display in the instrument panel, showing the aircraft position relative to the ground based on information from a Doppler navigation system. And the Trident was the first airliner fitted with a quick access flight data recorder. This stored information about the plane's behavior on a magnetic tape. So in case of problems, this could be analyzed later. We expect all craft to have a black box these days, but de Havilland was one of the first to introduce this innovation. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please like it and share it on social media. Do leave any comments below and please subscribe to this channel so you can catch up on more videos like this one, which we have planned for the near future. Go to our website to check our opening hours and come and visit us at the museum in London Coney, where you can see both the photo of the DH-66 Hercules and you can see inside the DH-121 Trident exhibit and go inside the cabin. Two aircraft, both with three engines, 40 years apart. See you at the museum.